Mr. Jose Guadalupe Garcia of Mexico City. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, Frank Maloney for Panics Promotions and the main events in association with Budweiser, the King of Beers and the Sunday Express newspaper proudly present a contest of 12 three-minute rounds to decide the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Introducing the boxers in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with gold waistband, fighting from Chicago, Illinois, and representing Don King's Productions, comes the challenger for the title, ranked number one by the WBC, the WBA, and the IBF. He comes to the ring tonight with a professional record of 24 victories, 17 by KO, and has just five losses in his 29 fight career. He weighs 231 and a quarter pounds, 16 stone, seven and a quarter. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the atomic baller, Oliver McCall. And in the red corner, wearing black trunks with red trim, fighting out of his native East London, he is a former Olympic gold medalist whose professional record is undefeated in 25 contests, 21 coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making his fourth defense of the title. He comes to the ring weighing 238 pounds, 17 stone even. He is a former undefeated heavyweight champion of Great Britain, the Commonwealth and Europe. He is the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the WBC heavyweight championship of the world. Gil McCall looked up almost as if his head was ready to explode. Well, McCall's I, I, gone to his corner now, has apparently forgotten about McCall, referee's instructions here. or doesn't want to participate McCall. in them. Come on here, McCall. Come on here. Still doesn't want to participate in referee's instructions. What a, what a, uh, very, very strange. Well, I've seen a lot of fights. Here, I haven't McCall. seen this before. Well, he's never had a big occasion like that, and he understandably is a little bit involved with everything else. And you know, Larry, he was so wound up, and I noticed that uh, Lennox Lewis uh, didn't, didn't seem to me to even break a sweat uh, in the dressing room. So I think the first round is very important. So what do you think? Advantage Lewis? First round is going to be a very important round. First round advantage McCall, despite the fact that he's, he looks like a nervous wreck to me. When you have that nervous energy early, Jim, it, uh, first round could be very important. Last second delay, a towel draped across the ropes just above our announced position here. So after some unusual moments, and they seem to crop up in every heavyweight championship fight, here we go. Lewis standing like a statue, much as he did at the beginning of his flawed defense against Bruno a year ago. Lewis's most ardent supporters want to see him move, jab, and box. Use his extraordinary athletic talent. trying to find the range to punch up at the bigger man. Lewis pawing with the jab as he did through much of the fight against Phil Jackson in May. I've already seen the hand of uh, Emmanuel Stewart as far as McCall is concerned. 
I watched films of McCall. I never saw him throw a left hook, but he did try one already in this fight. Emmanuel Stewart has worked with McCall during the past couple of weeks. As an assistant trainer and technical advisor, says that his man will show a variety of different styles during the fight tonight and try to confuse Lewis. He thinks Lewis is easily confused. And Lewis is fighting with his feet very wide apart. Lewis tried a right hand to the body, not a lot of conviction behind it. Hasn't yet thrown the sharp jab, which is his best. Mostly just sticking it out there. It's been a slow start for Lewis, and McCall seems to be waiting for the big man to try to do something. Lewis misses with the right. McCall gets a right hand to the body inside. Good counter by McCall. Another right hand to the body by McCall. And a little left hook there. The worst thing that Lewis can do is to try to wrestle with McCall. Right hand lands for McCall over the top. He misses to the body as Lewis backs away. Now Lewis begins to throw the jab with a little bit more intent. Dropping that left hand, Lewis. All this wrestling can really uh, sap your stamina, though, and that's, uh, again, McCall has been known to have very, very good stamina. If the first round is a prototype, so far it's a good one for Oliver McCall. Lennox Lewis hasn't really established anything in round one. Good, baby. Yeah. Hold down for me. You're looking good, okay? Like a very intelligent fight, and you're taking this big punch away from him in the right hand. You right. shot it twice, and every time you roll and counter. You caught him with it once the next time, but you're going to make him quit throwing it if you keep rolling the count, okay? But when you, that little counter hook you're doing is working. It's, it's clumsy, but it's working. When he jabs out, you know, you're blocking and you're throwing a hook. Right. Keep doing it because it's not landing, but it's moving them out we'll off balance. Right That's now. right, but you're moving them off balance when you throw that shot, okay? This piece of shit up. Water. Ready? Okay. Stay with your jab. That's the key. Nice and easy there. Ten seconds, hands him out, please. Stay on the stick. Keep it in the circle. When he's inside, try to catch him with the uppercut coming in. Right? Okay. Lewis threw more left hands and fewer right hands in the first round than we've seen him before, Gil. I thought it was by his own fight plan. But perhaps that's also the fight plan of, of uh, Stewart. And you know, uh, Larry, uh, down goes down Lewis. Down goes Lewis, Lewis having hand. caught a short left hand inside. Six, hey, seven, you. eight, nine. What is this? The WBC's referee has stopped this fight after a count to nine with Lewis standing in front of him. And we're going to have a riot here. Jose Guadalupe Garcia stopped the fight in the second round. Oliver McCall is going absolutely nuts. The crowd at ringside momentarily stunned. And that's got to be one of the strangest stoppages I ever saw. Certainly was. He was up at about the count of five, wobbled a little bit, but then he seemed to be getting himself together. It was for the heavyweight championship of the world. I can't believe what I just saw. But it's a WBC referee from Mexico. Jose Suleiman is the head of the WBC. He's from Mexico. He is Don King's best buddy. I think that very likely McCall might have finished Lennox Lewis. I do but too. Lennox Lewis, as the heavyweight champion, earned the right to be knocked out if that was how it was going to happen. I found now out. Look out. Yeah, you, you stopped the contest. All right, let's take another look. Gil, you say it was a short right hand inside. I called it a left. But let's take a look at the punch that put Lewis down. They're just moving around, sparring. Again, I had mentioned there's that right hand right on the button. 
Down goes Lewis. Another look. See, Lewis was fighting with that yep. leg so far apart that he had to reach in with the right hand, and he got beat to the punch. He well, his detractors have always said he has bad balance. But that's hardly a devastating punch. He was up by the count of six and certainly appeared capable of continuing in the fight. <laughs> Referee Jose Guadalupe Garcia of Mexico City working his 12th championship fight according to the literature we're given with Jose Suleiman, the WBC president, seated at ringside, stops the fight after one knockdown in the second round. And with that... Well, once again, the best laid plans go awry for Lennox Lewis, but this time he has nobody to blame but himself. Out the window goes the possibility of Lewis versus Bo in March. Oliver McCall earns one-third of the heavyweight championship. Right now, let's go to ring announcer Mike Goodall for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, after 31 seconds of round two, the referee has counted out Lennox Lewis, the winner and new WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Oliver McCall! I told you! I told you! I told you! And still in the ring, the aftermath is confusion, chaos, uncertainty as to exactly how this has taken place. Now we are prohibited here from interviewing either fighter until medical examinations have been conducted by the British Boxing Authority's medical examiners. So momentarily we hope to get a chance to talk to both Lewis and McCall, and I'm sure that Larry Merchant will work as well toward an opportunity to hear from the referee, Jose Guadalupe Garcia. I've never seen him before. Don't know if you have, Larry, but he's just made a huge impression on the sport. He sure has. Um... You know, there have been some preliminary fights tonight, and we've seen a lot of very, very fast stoppages in some of the preliminary fights tonight. But this is really uh, uh, unusual. I'm not going to say it's unprecedented. But when you have a heavyweight championship fight, the heavyweight champion should have a chance <laughs> to defend his title almost to the last breath. Now, as I, as I mentioned earlier, this happened very early in the round. Lennox Lewis was hurt. His eyes were glazed. The chances are that Oliver McCall would have gotten to him and perhaps stopped him, most likely stopped him. But I think you have to give the heavyweight champion the benefit of the doubt. You agree with Larry that uh, a stoppage was possible? Indeed, Larry says probable in this instance? Absolutely. I, th I think that uh, Lennox Lewis was badly hurt. He did manage to get up at six. The, the reason they have a 10 count is for you to have 10 seconds to clear your head. If when, when he went back into action, another few seconds, Lewis probably would have been okay. They should have given Lewis a chance to fight and also McCall a chance to really prove he's a champion by really finishing Lewis. You've been around the fight game as long as anybody who's active right now. You ever seen this referee? Never seen this referee, never. All right. Let's take another look at the round. We're going to look at it via our handheld cameras in real time and get one more look at the sequence of events that led up to the stoppage of the fight. 31 seconds worth of round number two. And you can see Lewis with his legs so wide apart. When he throws that right hand, he has to reach. And here it comes. The beat to the punch, reaching him with that right hand. When you get hit, get caught coming in, you really get nailed, and he was nailed. Six, seven, legs are wobbly, eight, clearly hurt nine. at that point. And perhaps it was the fact that he put his body weight on the referee and leaned on the referee without being able to steady himself into an erect position that convinced the referee he should stop it. Absolutely. He fell right into the referee. As a matter of fact, if the referee stepped aside, I think he would have fell down again. All right. Maybe that was what led the referee to make his decision. Meanwhile, I'm told that Larry is standing by with the new WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Oliver McCall. Larry. All right, Oliver. Oliver, congratulations. Was that a move that you had been looking to put over when he started his left to come over with the right? Well, I talked to Mike Tyson on the phone before I went to fight. 
He kept on saying, throw left hooks, throw left hooks. Once I saw that I was throwing a good left hook, I knew he was going to try the right hand because I knew once I hit him a couple of times, he got scared, he stopped holding on, he saw my power. I was waiting for him to throw the right hand. I was practicing that counter right hand. I counted that right hand and boom, oops, there it is. But first I would like to say happy birthday, happy birthday to Allison, her ninth birthday, his daughter. I love you. And this was for my grandfather and my father, Henry McCall, and my Jan, my sister. Back down. Understandably, you're very excited, Oliver. Uh, give us a, a sense of the fact that you've been a sparring partner for so long. You've, your best reputation was Come as a sparring it. partner for a champion. Yes, How that, difficult that, was it for you to make greater. a transition this far greater. in boxing? Well, it's all in the mind. You know, I never was a sparring partner. I See, that's what Charles said I was. Even the, all the guys I sparred with in my life, tell the truth. God knows I've got the better of the rounds, every guy, from Tyson on down. I've done the helping to get them in shape. All right. The next and question thanks to Don King, the king of the world, he brought me to the top. Uh, That's the, right. next, the next That's question right. is this. You knocked him down. He gets up at the count of six. He was wobbly. He was glazed. He would have got knocked out again. But, but prob oh. Probably. But, he would have. But, we, but, you you, but were you surprised that here in his hometown they stopped it that quickly? No. Hey. No, what y'all want me to do, the kill a man? Right. See, that's what's wrong now. One but, punch, like I said, this was the first punch, challenge for not only the heavyweight championship of the world, but between HBO and Showtime. I'm a Showtime fighter. I'm, I drew the first blood. I knock out Michael Moore, Riddick Bow. I come back here. But now I put on my show, so you'll see me again on Showtime, baby. Yeah. Thank you very much, Oliver. Jim? Ray. All right. All right, Larry. And there you see some of the business of boxing in all of its naked obviousness. Oliver McCall promoting his next television appearance, perhaps on another pay cable service. Well, it's, uh, it's a strange sport, Gil, and you see strange things all the time. Uh, you don't want to leap to too many conclusions too fast, but you saw the joy with which Don King embraces his return to a part of the heavyweight championship. It's been a few years, and he's back. Returned from almost oblivion. Back on top again with a heavyweight champion. Never count him out. Let's go to uh, Larry Merchant once again, now with Lennox Lewis. All right, Lennox, give us your version of what happened. Uh, I just got caught with a lucky shot, and the referee seemed to help him along really good. How, how dazed, how hurt, how wobbly were you because you looked badly hurt? I wasn't badly hurt. I was dazed. I got to my feet. I recovered. The referee asked me if I was okay. I nodded, yeah. Oliver McCoy ain't that good. He's not that good, so don't. Well, let you're not going to convince the people who, watch, who are out there. He did land a right hand punch. He, he landed a great right hand punch. Put me to. He put me on the ground. I, I tried to get up too fast. I, I was. I, I was a little bit wobbly, and all of a sudden, the referee just said, "No, that was it." Did you? Did you talk to him? Was he able to communicate w with you at all? The referee couldn't even speak English. When you nod your head, that means yes. Snap your punch. So you saw the copy.